Squad, out to a retailer, 2020. Yeah, which way do we go? Quivers Commerce Vlog. Uh, I'm Ben, the head of marketing. Uh, we're here in Denver, Colorado at the Outdoor Retailer Show 2020. So we're actually here a little early. It's Tuesday, uh, the day before the show. The whole OR starts tomorrow while the exhibition floor opens up. Uh, we're going to be talking all about outdoor industry uh, and retail related to it, ins and outs. Uh, but we're early because our CEO is speaking on a panel today. Um, it's actually the SIA uh, industry and intelligence forum. It's going on all week, but a lot of the great panels are kind of uh, pre-packed here on Tuesday, so a lot of people come in early to hear this. Um, we're gonna, they're going to go over a lot of great topics, you know, from uh, kind of being culturally aligned with your consumers, yeah, some supply yeah. chain stuff. Uh, I think there's a panel going on right now about, you know, how the impact of Chinese tariffs. Obviously, we, Quivers, uh, our CEO, Ruben's going to be up there talking about uh, distributed order fulfillment and how to basically make order fulfillment being uh, good at that process within your business a major competitive advantage as opposed to, you know, trying to play with price, uh, brand, product, other things. Um, you can actually take a... a uh, make a giant uh, leap forward just on fulfillment alone. It's going to be great stuff. Uh, hope you enjoy it. So in the words of the great Vanilla Ice, um, stop, collaborate, and listen. Uh, you know, it's all about partnering with retailers. Stop worrying about competing with each other. Right? It, it's not brands versus retailers here. Start collaborating on how to create an amazing experience for your customers and listen to those customers. Give them a reason to be loyal. Make it simple. Make it easy. You guys already create amazing products. You already create brand awareness. Do all the digital marketing. Spend all that money getting your consumers excited. Make sure you do the last part of this, which is getting them the products into their hands to be able to use. Hey guys, hey, we're back here at the Colorado Convention Center for day one of Outdoor Retailer. This is official day one, and we were at the pre-show yesterday, checking out all the panels, hearing some of the good thought leadership. Today, all the exhibitors are set up. They got all the gear out, all the apparel out. Um, it's basically just a sea of outdoor gear and apparel as far as the eye can see. And we're going to go run around and check out this stuff, see all these uh, products and innovations and what they've got going on this year. Um, but also, very importantly, uh, we're going to talk to you and we're going to talk to some of these brands uh, about the sell side. How are we going to get all of these products into the hands of consumers? Um, in particular, uh, we're going to talk about order fulfillment and why this is such a, an important part of uh, any consumer facing business. All right, so tell me a little bit about Jack Wolfskin. Yeah, so Jack Wilson's a German-based brand. It started roughly 40 years ago. Uh, it's in Ischgein, Germany, where we are now building a North American team and trying to get into the largest outdoor market. And you're moving into a, an office in Park City on Monday. Yes, yes. So we'll be neighbors very soon. I know, so, yeah. Uh, so this is our uh, 365 collection. So really a bit more urban, a bit younger, hipper. Um, what's really unique about this collection is 100% recycled. Oh, cool. And so we're the only brand that actually does a recycled membrane. So we have an exclusivity with the factory. We built the technology with them. It's actually one of the, the favorite products for everyone that's been walking through for women. Um, fleeces too? Yeah, got some fleeces. That looks great. Yeah, got some fun, you know, awesome. prints. You're going to see there's a lot of uh, talk today, right? A lot of panels, a lot of thought leadership, a lot of discussion. Everyone's talking to brands about, uh, you know, how do you build your brand? How do you do marketing? How do you do customer acquisition? All of this stuff that is, you know, pre-sale, pre-purchase. How do I get more customers? Get more customers. How do I grow, 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 grow? You have to do that stuff. But the big problem is a lot of customers come to your website today as a brand, right? Or they come into a retail store. They go looking for your product. They know your product. They know your brand. They come to you and they're ready. They have some intent to purchase. They have an idea of what they want. They get there. And a lot of these customers run into problems. They go online, they try and find you, and you're not selling online, right? That's a massive inconvenience for those uh, consumers who want to buy something from you, right? They get really excited, they get there, and now they can't get it. On the other hand, a lot of brands that are selling online 
way too many customers come in. If you've got a diverse product line, it's seasonal, different colors, different sizes, they get there, they run into a lot of out of stocks. This isn't, in all the data shows, this is an incredibly disappointing experience, right? Can't really stress this enough. So while all this talk, all this all leadership is still on the, how do I get, you know, consumer side, how do I get people? Um, a really important piece of that puzzle is, how do I get my products to those people, right? Once they want my stuff, how do I get stuff to them, you know, when and where they want it? We are like talking about how customers are like, they want it now and they want it available. Why is that? Why do we just like, why do we just, lot, why do we need it? People go to Amazon it's so fast and they have what you want. You get it in two days. Yeah. And if you have any issues with it, you can return it. And so there's almost this no hassle and you get it now. Do you go to a different brand? if they can't get it to you fast enough? No, usually once I've decided on a type of product, I'll know the brand that I want it from. Online, is it on Amazon? Is it on Zappos? Is it on the retailer's website? How do I get it the fastest? And a lot of them all have two days. Yeah. But you have to look at the shipping, the fees, the shipping if it's under a certain amount, uh, if there's free returns. If I have a product in mind and a brand, I'm still connected you gotta to find it, it and I want to find it. So now that's almost a competition with myself. Where can I find it? Yeah, so now you're on a hunt. So I noticed that none of the places you said you were going to buy something is from the brand's website. Usually not from the brand's website. They generally lag, like a, a retail experience online. They're more focused on the product the information. and the information than they are with the customer service side of a website. How brand loyal are you? Like, say you decided what you wanted, you know the brand, but you can tell you're not going to get the experience. They're not like, they're out of stock, or you can't get it in the time you want. Like, are you gonna wait until they restock it or find somewhere where they can ship it to you fast? How two brand things, fluid are you? Is what there's I'm two things that go into it. Either I'm looking for a product because I have an impromptu trip and need to replace something, yeah. and I go, oh, I'm yep. leaving in two days, I need it now. Yeah. Then I'm gonna be a little bit more flexible, even if I'm brand loyal. Well, it comes down to like sustainability. And so if uh -huh. I'm gonna, if I can take my time, is the brand sustainable? What's their yep. packaging? What is their shipping process? So, so when you're willing to wait, that stuff matters more. Yes. If I been researching the product heavily yeah. and I'm, I'm just tied to this. It's what I want. It's like my golden nugget. I will wait seven to ten days. I won't be happy about it yeah. and it could alter my decision the next time. Um, uncomfortable truth. <laughs> These days, consumers practically care more about the purchase experience than they do about the brands themselves. I know this hurts. I know that's a hard thing for proud brands to hear. You got legacy. Another unfortunate problem is there's a lot of really great brands out there, and there's an increase in um, kind of brand fluidity, if you will. Whereas someone can be, you know, a consumer can be quite loyal to a particular brand. You know, say they're absolutely in love with Patagonia. You know, I think in the past, maybe even five, ten years ago, that brand loyalty would run deep. You know, they wouldn't change products. These days. If you're into Patagonia, you're looking for something, and you run into too many out of stocks on their website, consumer is going to move over and buy the puffy from you know the North Face instead. So today, you really have to take seriously using fulfillment, fulfillment processes, right, and make sure your fulfillment, uh, you know, capabilities internally as a company is a source of excellence for how you do business and compete and make that a competitive advantage. Using fulfillment as a competitive advantage is absolutely going to increase you know, your GMV um, and your overall business performance in 2020. All right, we are here with Devin. Devin, I'm Colton. I work for Quivers. Um, we're going around asking people how they go about buying, or, or first figuring out what product they want to buy. So, you know, maybe a pair of skis. Are you a skier? Yeah, sure. So when you're looking for a pair of skis, how do you decide on what pair of skis you want? And then ultimately, how do you go about buying that pair of skis? Yeah, I try to read reviews, try to look at different websites that sort of stack up similar products against each other. And then once I've sort of narrowed it down, I, I really like to, to go and see it, like to, to go to a local retailer. So if you're on the brand website looking at a ski you might want, you leave and go buy it maybe somewhere like a like an Evo or yeah. Backcountry or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Do, would you ever buy it from the brand if it was there in the same price? Um, potentially, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think it, it really depends on like, you know, with a lot of my gear purchases that aren't skis, um, for sure, like warranty or the ability to return is really important for me. So, 
Um, that's where a brand like Evo or REI that has a really solid return policy. Yeah, yeah. Which is like a lot of people, really a lot a lot of their purchasing, purchasing decision comes to like convenience and how easy it is to get their products back when they return. Yeah. So within the outdoor industry, like the the major retailers like Evo, Backcountry, REI are your first stop. And is it online or offline, like in the store? Um, I would say it depends on what it is. Usually, if it's a big purchase, I try to do as much online before and then going in and seeing it and, and potentially buying it there. I also, for whatever reason, I just feel more comfortable a lot of times buying online. Um, like, just thinking about the, what I'm gonna buy or whatever. You do the research, right? Yeah. You get a brand in mind, yeah, yeah. you know what you wanna get, right? You got the brand, you kinda got the size, you got the color, it's all lined up, you've done this research. And then you end up in the retail store, whether it's online, offline, whatever, and you're looking at the one, and maybe they don't have it or whatever, or there's something next to it, you know, that's comparable. How often does that draw your purchase away from your original intent? I, I would say it does, especially, I think it's more, if I've made my mind up, usually I've, I've, price has been considered in that. Um, so even if I'm like, ah, oh, this is cheaper, usually I'm still gonna go with whatever I've made my mind up. But for sure if, some, if they don't have it or if it's out of stock, then like I'm really quick to be like, okay, well I kinda, I've already made my mind up that I want this item. And what's your runner up? Right, what's, yeah. the, what's well, the next? That's really interesting. So you've picked what you want. Yeah. Even if there's a discount of something similar, yeah. you're still going to go with that. Yeah. But if number one, what you wanted is out of stock, yeah. Yeah. you're not going to wait for that to come back in stock. In that case, you are going to go with the runner up? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yesterday, we had a lot of fun. We ran around, we talked to a number of consumers, um, had some really good conversations with them. But any obstacle in the way there where they just can't have it, you know, that, that is gonna immediately erode your brand equity. Consumers these days care a lot about convenience, almost more than they care about the brands themselves. All in all, this is a pretty exciting show. Uh, we've seen a lot of our uh, current brands with very full booths. Great to see that, uh, you know, they're killing it. Salmon, we were pretty excited to see their new um, shift boot, super light. Uh, the flex rating is really high. We're excited, it's gonna be a very high performance boot. A lot of great branding, a lot of good product development. They're spending a lot of time and money on branding and marketing and great product development. Um, but where they're falling short is getting product into the hands of consumers. Um, you just really have to go the extra mile in the fulfillment and the customer experience. So uh, we happen to know a company who's pretty darn good at helping people with that. So get at us. Let's get these awesome products in the hands of your consumers. Out of stocks, figured out.